and then have three delivery stops along the way. I'm like, who's fucking I like I would have never ordered this mm -hmm. if you told me you were gonna you said the place was less than four minutes from my house. There was no other options. It's not like I could click on multiple restaurants. And then they it wouldn't have mattered if they drove straight here. It would have been cold by the time they got here. It's a forty plus minute drive. So it took almost two hours. And of course, it was fucking garbage by the time it got here. But you can't talk to anybody and you can't do anything. And the last time, they charged me $20 more than they were supposed to, which was their mistake. You can go into the app and, like, I order reads all the time. And um, you can go into the app and do, like, help. And then do it'll ask you if you want the driver's help. And you say, no, I want more help. And then basically just say you weren't satisfied with the food, right? And give a reason why. There's like drop downs and stuff. It'll be like a AI thing will come up and give you choices and say it was cold or late or whatever it is, right? And go through those options and they'll either give it to you for free or they will uh, give you a discount on it depending on your choices in that drop down. Oh, I've long been through that. <laughs> it didn't go well? They, no, it didn't. And then they fucking. They overcharged me by $20 last time, and it took me, like, five days, and, like, going through that help chat and emailing and whatever else, people just, like, basically hanging up on me in chat and starting over every two minutes. <laughs> well, every time I've done it, it's been automated. I've not talked with anybody. Like, it's always just a robot is like, yeah, here, here's a discount. Are you happy? No, the automated thing, like, wouldn't give me my $20 back. Mm. Because they mischarged me. And then today, they they just straight up, like, sent me to a thing. And uh, I'm like, it's probably because the last time I ordered, they had to give me a $20 refund. But it was their fault, not mine. Mm -hmm. And so now my account's, like, flagged for being a piece of shit or something. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, uh, there's people like me and John who, when you do the Uber shit, they're like, yeah, here you go. You never complain. And then my girlfriend, <laughs> she's like, I always have to talk to these motherfucking bitches. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, they hate you. They flagged your account. <laughs> I have had it come up one time where it's like, this has been elevated to for someone, like a real person to review. And it, it, some of the things are stupid. It's like, my food didn't arrive. They're like, can you uh, give me photo evidence of that? Yes, I'm they like, do. They I just do took that. a like, picture of like an empty porch and put it on there. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you want me to? Because usually they'll take a photo, but this that time they didn't even do a photo. Right, the delivery driver didn't bring it, but he said he delivered it, and there was no photo evidence from his side. I'm like, what do you want me to give you proof of that it's not here? That's what I do. I just send them like a stupid picture or like a picture of my empty hand or something, and I'm like. Because it's all <laughs> cut and paste, you know? They can't, they don't even fully speak English most of the time because they just click on stuff. You should Her take a picture of like long, long ago. <laughs> you should take a picture next time of like G sitting at a table with the empty plate and just like forks in his hand, just looking sad, you know? <laughs> like the food's oh not God. here. <laughs> That's a great idea. That put me in a bad mood. <laughs> then as soon as we sit down, I literally clicked on Discord, we lost internet. Yeah. At the same time, so I was like, fuck, it's both of us. How's everybody's week? Good. Hectic at work, but good now it's weekend. Same. They wanted two reports done immediately at the same time, and I'm like, I only got one me. What am I gonna do? The answer was P. Is her Discord shitty for anybody else or just me? Yeah, it's a little pretty, bit. Well, it's pretty rough. But... It, it's just robot-y. Like, I can hear yeah. you, but it's gravelly. It's like a bad connection or something, maybe. I don't know. I got it with me because my roll 20 won't load and stuff. My roll 20 Hello. loaded. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, I, that's it sounds better to me. Keep heard. talking. I am talking. I'm saying words. Uh, I am. <laughs> I can't yeah. do it's like, yeah, it sounds it's robot still. Yeah. It's catching everything, but it's like cutting you off every like second or so. It's like crackling. Like, it's just like choppy, I guess. It's Wi Fi oh. interference. I don't know why it's bad. Mm hmm. I mean, if you have three bars or green bars on Discord, you should be good. Maybe it's the mic. I don't know. Am I not fucking logged in? Am I used? You normally sound crystal clear. Like, 
Mike. Mike blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's like M- Mike. M- Mike. You know what I mean? It's got like that separation. Uh, literally, I'm not even streaming anything right now. <laughs> it says I have three bars. Okay, yeah. I don't know. Hit the mic. I am using a wireless headset. It sounds mm. like Wait, it repair. just got better for a second. Keep saying something. I am saying something. Oh, okay. So mm. you can go into your Windows settings to the microphone, and then you can like click to hear yourself, <clears throat> and then you'll know for sure if it's the mic or Discord. Yeah, it could be like battery level. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Bluetooth are kind yeah. of annoying like that. Yeah, but let's see. I'm willing to put up with it as long as everybody shuts up when Harry talks. <laughs> so you know in the top right of Roll20 where you have the bar that has like the chat bubbles, the cog wheel, all that stuff? Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. For some reason mine is in the center of the screen. Like <laughs> where, the, where the page uh, that you swap between like different Yeah, your drop down. <laughs> yeah, so I can't control anything suddenly. That's so funny. I would just you, refresh, I guess. Yeah, try refresh. If that doesn't work, you can try the Discord app. It seems to work fine this week. Was it working this week? Oh, yeah. The only reason I didn't use it because my freaking... My extension is browser-based. There's something going on. Mm-hmm. Went to a barbecue instead of what I was going to do. So I am... I don't really drink anymore, but I am a few beers in, so... <laughs> I will be patient. <laughs> well, if I can have a med slide in solidarity. <laughs> <laughs> use the discord version uh, click the activity button like you launch any other activity and just scroll down till you see roll 20 yeah you gotta click oh. on the voice chat first <laughs> excuse me I hope you guys can't see mine can I drag stuff onto this? No, no. No, it, I can't. You like log in and it just takes you to the game like normal. Oh, yeah. oh, I see. It's a lot of gravy. <laughs> yeah. I realized after last time I had to fix up some of the. Who wants to do the recap? Me. Me. Last time. Please, mommy. Good. No, I don't want to do it, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's too late. You're oh, the... fuck. Um, That's okay. a note taker, anyhow. Let me go to the notes then. Cause... <laughs> uh, SpongeBob. That was a long time ago. Together. Okay. So, Mayor Shoth gave us a quest that Cricket was thinking we might take our time. We said, fuck that. We went right away. There was a destroyed cart. And none of us were really figuring out anything until a ban- uh, until a- an ambush occurred between uh, us and some bandits. And we saw some of the elite bandits show um, some weird demonic hellhound creature, or devilish. Uh, which caused practically a near-death encounter for the entire team. <laughs> specifically, Gene and Gravy. Um, Gravy had to revive... Uh, G, and then the team had to revive um, Gravy after uh, the battle was remedied, or I don't know, something like that. Uh, Gravy Gravy seemed pretty angry uh, by his near-death experience. We took a short rest. We continued uh, investigating uh, the loot of the enemies. For gold weapons and valuables, I didn't get all those finer details, but for example, Gravy found a necklace on the dog, which turns out it was Gel's. 
Gels got that from um, his family member, I think his mother, who uh, he hadn't necessarily had contact with, or maybe she had passed. Um, and then the party... Oh, yeah, John Carlo came with us for some fucking reason. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then the whole time, he walked like a slow-ass piece of shit, and then he ran home after, um, which, gr- good for him to exercise, you know. Yeah. Um, then we also leveled up to level three so we each got a subclass so i guess also in this recap we could go one by one i took a level three college of lore so i'm like very heavy skill spells not tanky not melee based uh what about you harry what do you think you what'd you go i went with what's it technically called Yes, thank oh, the you, Fae? Roger. Yeah, the Fae. Fae thingy. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So you might oh. notice Harry is slightly hairier than usual, but not <laughs> much else has changed. His mustache just got slightly longer. Nice, <laughs> nice. What about you, G? What'd you go? Uh, I went pack to the blade. Uh, so I put my scimitar away that I was going to use, and I have a great sword now. Oh big, god, big okay. Black great sword with silver runes engraved on it. A BBG. Yeah. Uh, I also changed one of my invocations. I had the mage armor one and I swapped it for uh, a pack to the blade one where I can equip armor and be proficient in it. Uh, so I was going to ask Gene for his leather armor to use in the meantime. Gene or Yeah. Gail. Gail. You mean Gail, or do you mean, mean yourself? I do mean, mean Gail. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can have the leather armor. Thank you. So he I'm means gonna take... Gene Gravy. Yeah, <laughs> I do. Excellent special. I'm going to take the leather armor off my character, and you can put it on yours. Perfect. It was just in my inventory. It has never been worn. Uh, uh, Gail, what did you level up to? Um, first off, I want to say, Harry, by the way, your voice came through crystal clear when you gave your, your story. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. I didn't do anything. Yeah, whatever it was, <laughs> it's resolved itself, so you, you're, you're perfectly fine now. Do you know left the house? <laughs> um, so I leveled up, and I became a totem barb, um, and specifically a bear barb. Um, you will notice that I'm a bit hairier as well. Um, <laughs> Uh, my skin a is a l- little bit thicker than, you know, looking than what it used to. I have a glorious beard and some man chest hair now. Oh, so. shit, overnight? Yeah, it's uh, been an eventful occasion for me. And uh, I mean, the I'm going to need to find a barbershop if I need to clean up. But uh, <laughs> I actually forgot so Two to bears mention. and two twinks. Yeah, yeah. I forgot to mention that... Uh, I'm less hairy now. Yeah, I'm hairless. <laughs> I shaved, and uh, yeah, it's great. I'm featherful. <laughs> um, but that's all I got. I think uh, we par- returned with Giancarlo to Heartfelt. Um, the map we're on is the manor, but we also had some other more role play or more quest based things to do in town. Yep. Proud of you. And you did a good job recapping. You also found a pocket watch that you have. And so yes. far, to our knowledge, it has no significance, but it's there. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> I, I do have, um, I mean, above the table, I have a, oh, I don't have it. Okay. I thought I had identify. I don't know where I went. But... Oh, sorry. I switched off identify because it's so expensive between levels. So I can like switch a spell that I already have. Um, but yeah, I can switch back into identify if we ever want to identify it, but it costs like fucking 100 gold or something, like 50 gold. Good god. Harry can detect poison now. Nice. Nice. And he's slightly more charismatic. actually could... uh, uh, I was thinking one of the things we might want to do is go back over to the church, check on the cleric. I mean, the the church guy. Make sure he's okay, because last time when we left, he was not looking too good. I know that Gene healed him, and hopefully he's good. Um, maybe he's already came over to the house now, since the mayor said he was going to send somebody to check on him or bring him over. So maybe he's actually in this house with us. But 
Um, Dude, he a hundred percent transformed into some sort of like demon. Like yeah. that guy looked oh. like he was about to fucking <laughs> alien Ooh, out of his him. chest. I didn't yeah. even consider that. Yeah, and um. Yeah, I was thinking also, obviously we're in the house right now, so we could talk to the mayor, see what's going on here, and then maybe check on the church. Did We we never searched the church, but we were there, so I don't know if there's anything worth searching. Maybe that'll be really quick. Maybe there's nothing. And also, potentially, the barns we never looked at, um, or talked to the guys that had the barns burned down. So, I don't know. Those are some things I was thinking. Uh, while you're all kind of standing around bragging about how changed you are <laughs> in the most recent trip, to the Lord's Manor, Giancarlo has disappeared to clean himself up, and uh, <laughs> you are left alone uh, in the meantime. Could I ask a question real quick? Sure. This is just about the table. Um, G, are you still disappearing for a bit? Uh, no. I'm okay, so it's four of us? Yep. Okay, okay. Okay, cool. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure. I was very confused for a second. <laughs> I was like, Me oh. too. I was like, uh, disappearing. Well, because my Discord is disconnected like three times in the last five minutes, so I thought he was talking about that, but... Then you I have realized. to stop seeding all of your torrents. Yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> okay, cool, yeah. Uh, cool, we're in the manor, but the mayor's not here. Well, you don't know if the mayor's here or not. Uh, you're oh, just okay, in the, okay. like, foyer and where you've been left by Giancarlo. Um, it was abandoned hey. formalities in uh, order to get himself cleaned. Like Harry, Gil, G, can I talk to you guys real quick? Of course, what's up? Yes. I just, uh, listen, I wanted to apologize specifically to Gil and Harry. Um, when you guys revived me, it was a really scary moment, and I got really angry because I'm not really as combat ready as you three. But on top of that, um, if you didn't notice, I'm really scarred by the fact that I was raised by birds, and when they died, I had to eat them. So uh, I typically don't deal with death well, but I just want you three to know that uh, I do trust you, and I shouldn't have said that I don't trust you because that's not, uh, it's not your place to... Um, to uh you know take care of me all the time and uh, i just want you to know like i feel taken care of and uh if you guys are not healthy i will try to heal you um in and out of battle i hope you accept my apologies everybody of course just know we got your back bro that's much better yeah but yeah it, everyone's first death experience is rough to say the least and especially with the, your traumatic past, I can't say I blame you. I think that uh, we all might have been a little scarred from what just happened, one way or another. No hard feelings at all. I'm sorry that that happened to you. And uh, in comes Giancarlo, newly <laughs> refreshed, looking as perfect as usual, except he's got, you know, a... Uh, Cut on his left cheek. Question. That was definitely not there before, and it's starting to bruise. Did he walk in slowly? He walked in hurriedly, and nice. he is. Let me clickety click. I can't select stuff. Might be on the wrong layer. I think so. It was. So he comes in and he's like. I, I apologize for my disappearance and lack of hospitality. Uh, my lord would be gravely offended if I did not at least offer you uh, something to drink, some sort of refreshment. He would be delightful. Is Mr. Is, is Mayor Schaff in? I have yet to check, but I will be reporting to him immediately. Uh, I will take... Um, um, uh, blended oats. <laughs> he looks at you with a raised eyebrow, but doesn't question you at all. And then he uh, leaves the room. Uh, he heads back towards the office area, enters the study that you were previously in. We'll have to 
tell me about bird customs one day? Ah, yes. So the, fascinating. The Aarakocra people. They are pretty yes. nice. <laughs> Uh, Giancarlo comes back within a few minutes with a tray um, filled with your tea and saucers and um, sits them down on the table in the very center of the room here. And there is a bowl of oats. I feed it to the bird and the bird pukes it into my mouth. (laughs) Oh my god. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Harry stares fascinated. Giancarlo kind of uh, clears his throat and he's like, <clears throat> I have checked and uh, the Lord Master is not here, but I do advise that you wait and don't touch anything. You may uh, head outside to the gardens if you wish, but do not venture around the man or on a company. Well, Which where uh, the gardens? Okay. <laughs> is this a dig at earlier for us going into that closet? Yes, and he just kind of points and gestures towards the front door that you can go out. Oh, okay. Can we go to the town, or do you think the mayor will be back soon, Giancarlo? I would say either way, it's better to be safe and be here within the hour. So if you can be back within the hour, uh, I would make sure. Okay. We'll walk yeah. the church she reading more than an hour for anyone. I think it's right up the hill, right around here. Yeah. Let's go to the church then and come back. Yeah, that should be quick. Thank you, Giancarlo. He bows and kind of uh, cringes a little bit and like leaves the room again. Um, Cricket, how about how long has it been since we originally left and came back? I would say it's been about five hours. Okay. Five or I don't six know. hours, maybe. While we're out, Gravy, if you want to check on your gear, maybe, as well. I oh, fuck, I have to write a song. <laughs> so it's the uh, middle of the afternoon, like 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Right now. Do we have time to get okay. Geary and go to the church? We'd split up. Or is that too far? I can, you guys can go to the church. I can go pick up the leather armor. Okay. That's fair. Write a, write a hurried poem around. Along yeah, the I'm like hurriedly <laughs> writing. A, like a... <laughs> Ask your parrot. Your version yeah. of chat GPT. <laughs> Who's going yeah. away? Um, I'm going alone to the leather. Okay. And we're going to the church. Yeah. Okay. So I'll take gravy first. I'm sharing this video of my cat because I have to. Where's the fucking map? Oh. Oh, looky here. You're all here. All right, Gravy. Uh, you make your way down the hill. Enter the leather worker's shop where the bell rings as soon as you uh, enter the room and the uh, leather worker kind of peeks out uh, around the hallway like he did the first time you were there. He, uh, Kind of burst out laughing as soon as he sees you. Oh, the insane clown boss. Uh, are you done with the leather? As I walk in. Well, that depends. Oh, God. Uh, just checking, um... Did you want a more sexual song, or did you want, like, a light-hearted song? Is it not done yet? It's more of a 50-50. You can have one or the other. Ah, so you prepared two songs for me. One is not safe well, for work. Well, I'll take it. You can take... I'll take both. I can oh, always use fuck. an extra song. Okay. And, uh, how about I make you a deal? Sure. I'll take both so- I'll take both songs. I'll provide you with your uh leather set. And then I will also take you across to the tavern and buy you a little drink. Oh. Oh, he's buying you a drink. 
Ooh. And you can uh, sing me the songs and we can get to know each other a little bit better. <laughs> okay. Well, 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 aren't you a... Uh... Well, yeah, you got my phone number. <laughs> you rizzed me up. <laughs> For sure, I'll take the armor and the date. All right, well, we'll let the armor finish curing here while we go across the street to the tavern. Sound good? Okay. Just don't beat me up, because I'm really sore. I died earlier. <laughs> Roll 20 for hotness. How hot <laughs> is this leather worker? Yeah, how hot is he? Oh, shit, that's really bad. But I got a song going. Where did it go? Right. So the two of you walk across uh, down to the tavern, which is almost completely empty at uh, <laughs> three o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, God. You hear some kind of banging around in the back room when you enter, and uh, Derek. Uh, Kind of pounds his fist on the bar and he says, Oi! And uh, the maid from the previous evening comes out uh, from the storeroom and uh, looks at him and says, uh, Two of the usual, Derek. And he nods. She uh, pours you both a glass and slides it across the bar and she makes sure to stop and say, uh, Thank you so much. Uh, you and your friends really saved us all here last night. I'm sure Manka is very appreciative. Oh, uh, oh, sorry, Krika, just to double check. Does she slide a, a, a wine glass or like a beer flask, a beer it's a, wagon? It's a big uh, mug of ale. Okay, okay, okay. Not as sexy, but you know. Uh, no problem, um, you know. We actually just went and destroyed more demons outside the town, so you could say that uh, we're doing God's work. That's good to hear. I'll be sure to make sure that uh, Manka hears about that. I know that he's very worried about anything else happening. He, he was able to wake up this morning. And sorry, Manka was the injured man in the fight, right? Oh, yes, Manka's the owner of this establishment. He was the barkeep and the host for the wedding. He was injured seriously. Yes, yes, that man. I did everything I could. <clears throat> well, I know everyone involved is very appreciative of your efforts and those of your friends, and uh, those drinks are, are on me today, boys. And she says, if you don't excuse me, though, I have a lot of cleanup to do since it's just me here now. No worries. Um, I'm just going to sing a song because that's how I am. She chuckles and kind of goes back to her work. I turn to Derek with dreamy eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Derek is enthralled. He's like staring into your eyes. The mug of ale perched about his lips, not yet taking a sip, but just in awe <laughs> of you turning the talent on. Uh, so Derek, did you want... I can give you both songs on paper, but I'll only sing one for you. Would you like the lighthearted song or the sexy song? <laughs> oh. I'm not the sexiest of men. I probably need to... Uh... <laughs> And he's like he blushes and he's like, I probably need to hear how it's done from a professional, of course. Oh my god, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, um what do I sing? Um I think I have a liar. No, I only have the hand drum. Play some Barry White, so, baby. <laughs> so uh Yeah, I'm just like close the door. <laughs> uh uh okay he's uh yeah he turns on a definitely a more like bassy voice and he's like hitting the drum it really sex <laughs> uh, really sexy 
Uh, in the forest I soared, feeling wild and free. But your hands brought me down, whispering to me. You shaped every curve with leather so tight. Wrapped me up in desire under the moonlight. Uh, and then I, the drum kind of builds up. And then uh, you gave me the power in armor that clings. Uh, a touch so electric like the brush of wings. And then I point to my bird. <laughs> uh, from the sky to your arms, I'm yours to command. And then I like look at him, bound by the leather, by your skillful hand. And I like rub my hand on his chest. And then, so here's to your touch, where passion ignites. In the armor you made, I'm yours for the night. Derek. Yeah, make sure you say their name at the end, because that's like hella sexy, Derek. He takes a huge drink of his ale and he just doesn't stop. He's just chugging it. The whole thing. He takes wow. a big gulp and like wipes the, the froth off of his face. And he's like, I'm never going to remember that. But I'll never forget this moment. <laughs> um. So uh, did you want another drink or does that leather cured? Oh, well, I thought that we... We could talk and get to know one another, but if you're in a hurry. No, I guess I guess <laughs> not. Let's get to know each other. <laughs> <laughs> he uh just kinda leans over the bar and uh fills his cup up again himself. Sits back down. He's like, Megan knows I'm good for it. Wow. So where where will you be heading this evening? Where will you lay your precious head? Oh, uh, I hate sometimes knowing that you're just mind fucking the DM because my players have done this to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, I slept in the stables last night, so I don't know. Maybe uh, the bed of a very very hot. Leatherer? <laughs> and his eyes get wide and he's like, you know another leatherer? Oh, God. Huh. You chose to buy mine? Uh, no, actually. Conveniently, my mine has been wiped, so you're the only leatherer I know. He, uh, he looks pretty surprised and he's like, well, I must say I'm flattered, but... You did meet my wife, Mary. Oh, she... <laughs> oh uh, yeah. That's I, not an open relationship, right? I think your uh, your armor set is probably cured by now. Uh, I, I very much appreciate the song. And he gets real fidgety and like stands up and pounds his drink again. And he's like, well, we better be getting back. I, I appreciate you. Having an afternoon drink with me and a nice relaxing uh, break, but lots of work to be done. And he kind of like rushes you to hurry out the door. Uh, all right, let's go back. Cover up your boner, Derek. <laughs> I, I totally forgot his what I thought. I think Derek forgot he had a wife for a minute. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> so uh, he hurries. I forget that they let stay here. He hurries back uh, to the counter and uh, pulls the leather armor off of a form and hands it to you. And is uh, still visibly a little shaken, but face scarlet as ever. Well, Derek, I'll think about you when I wear this armor, clinging tightly to my body, bound by the leather of your skillful hand. He gulps and he says, I'll never forget you. <laughs> I'm quite sure uh, you'll be on my mind as well. Okay. Oh, okay. 
Just uh, close your eyes when you're with your wife, all right? Oh, See you no. later. <laughs> he looks so confused as he watches you walk out. Can I make it just an insight to see if if he, if he's struggling with like queerness right now? <laughs> like, don't do it. Oh, no, you will wonder forever. All right. Oh I just, no. <laughs> I leave, and then I'll, I'll go join up with the party. Whatever. I don't think it much in. matters with your level of flirtation. Yeah, don't think so. I. <laughs> Uh, so you're going to the church now? Yeah, like, I'll catch up after they've, you know, whatever they've done. So, God. <laughs> that poor man's gonna think of you one way or another forever. I actually thought he asked me on a date. I was... It sounded like he did. <laughs> I forgot he was married. Yeah, I forgot to. So, you guys walk back to the site of the church, and the yeah, priest tent is still there with all of his bits and baubles, and there's still rubble around the stairs and the stone base of the church. But there is no priest in sight. Maybe that's a good thing. Have you loaded the map for us, or am I just... Oh, sorry. It's probably blocked. You guys are on it for me. Oh. Does everybody else see it, or is it just... I do not. I'm still at the leather workers. Okay. You see it now? We're on the wrong, oh, I'm a We're on the wrong map. Yeah. You're on the wrong. There we go. It looks a lot different for me. Now I see it. Okay. Fog of War gone as well? Yep. Okay. That's the looks like scheme. Um... So I thought, well, I mean, now we kind of got the place to ourselves. Uh, a little curious what happened to the uh, the monk while he's not here. We got a better accommodation. Um, a reminder, right? Derek yeah. is married to Mary, the so. market stall lady who makes Oh, the, no, we like Mary. The food. <laughs> and they were the couple oh, no. you met at Mary, the wedding. Mary's my friend. She's my oh, drinking no. buddy. Nailed it. Um... I was thinking maybe we could search the surrounding areas and the church in here. Um, what your guys' thoughts are? And uh, so, is it just this first level? Because I remember him talking about going up a flight of stairs. Is there mm. like wooden stairs that are burned down, or is there like a, a basement? Or so there's. Uh, from what you see, there is a stone floor that's still um, standing and holding everything up. There's about like one foot foundation stone uh, outlining where all the rooms were. Okay. Uh, charred bits of wood, kind of the framework of the building that's <clears throat> completely burned, but some of it still stands, just very small amounts, like two foot here of a a post and whatnot but the only other thing that stands is stone so there's the dais at the front which is a big stone uh, flat like table altar at the north end here wait let me select here and then there are various stairs coming in um doorways around the church entrance way oh, you said various stairs yeah these? Okay. This here? This here? Yeah. This here? This here? Okay. So those stairs. stairs would take us upstairs? And this is stairs. They're coming from the... The ones along the walls are coming from the outside. The ones in the corners uh, were going upstairs. But they're leading to nothing at this point. Okay. So, like, the whole roof's caved in. And the whole roof is caved in. There's beams and everything down. So this the building of the church with stone and its foundation and the stairs mm. only and wood from the top. Okay. So, uh, guys, I thought maybe we'd take a, a look in here. Um, just see what we might can find if we want to search different aspects of this place, maybe. Sounds good. We can take these little rooms over here. Okay. I'm going to search around the altar area. 
can we roll investigation? Alright. Nat 20. So Harry, you find um, in the... This room was like a room that had a bunch of supplies in it, like candles it and things late. like that. You see a couple of metal candlesticks on the floor that survived the fire, um, but not much else, uh, except in the corner, you see a small metal box wedged in the stone wall. I pick up the candlesticks under one arm and then I grab the stone box, the box, metal box. It is a stone box. So stone it is box. small and hand carved. It is just got like a probably one to two centimeter thick lid that just kind of sits on top. And it's a crudely carved square uh, box below. I bring my findings out to the main room. Interesting. Is the box locked? The box is not locked, but do you open the box or do you wait? Um, to I you... put it on the podium for the group to assess. Uh, who else is looking around? Uh, I was looking around the podium. I didn't know if Jean wanted to assist me with the search around here. Yep. So maybe one of us. Together or yeah, I think you... we're working together. I think that's probably the easiest way to handle this. So how are you going to assist him with that, Jean? We're both searching the same area. So maybe, I mean, just my thought, maybe we're, you know, one person gets advantage on the search, or I don't know how you want to handle it, but that's what I'm asking, Gene, since he's assisting you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna like feel around the the podium for anything hidden or anything like that, mm. not specifically okay. looking for boxes <laughs> or whatever might be there. I just wondered if you were um like going to give him luck or anything like that. Oh no. no. <laughs> So then both of you roll investigation. Okay. Fourteen. And Jean got a nineteen. So, uh, though you don't find anything while you're looking, but uh, Jean, while you're feeling around the edges of uh, the dates, you knock something um, to the ground that's uh, metal and it's shaped it's very small it's about uh, I don't know two centimeters by two centimeters uh, at first it looks like a coin uh, and then you realize that it is the small end of like a bird's beak and it has feathers etched in it. Can I see where it fell out of or from? It just uh, fell off of like the ledge of the dais. There's oh, nothing special about it. It okay. was just a piece of stone. Uh, it probably got knocked there. Yeah. And now it's just gotten knocked down. Okay. But you recognize it is the same kind of craftsmanship um, as the quill that the priest gave you. Interesting. Same metal type, same craftsmanship. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick it up and put it on the dais so everyone can see. So you uh, recognize that it is kind of like a small, uh, what would be the equivalent of like a pen cap yeah. for quill, but it's, it rests in it. So it is, let me see if I can draw it for you real quick here. Probably easier. I get out the pen, the Ooh, quill I pen forgot. that I have to compare. Uh, I forgot. The, the, the guy, he said that, like, the quill that he gave you, Gene, might have some magical properties. I don't know, I don't know if that's a standard thing in D&D, so, I mean, for me. I think but, he gave it to us as a spell focus. Yeah. That yeah. was my understanding. Yeah. Okay. But who knows? 
there could be more to it. This is what I want. So from the side, it looks like this. It's really small. It just has like a small uh, place to rest a quill in. This would be the bird's beak element here. Mm -hmm. The rest is just okay. the same metal as the uh, quill. So, so it's like a it's, a it's a holder for for a quill that would sit on a desk or something like that. Yeah. Yes. So if this is the quill, yeah. this is the holder, but it's very small. Right. Okay. Well, Got let's the uh, set now. <laughs> let's try putting the quill in it. And see if it does anything. Let's try to what? I'm sorry. Put the quill in it. I put so the quill you in it. sit the quill in it, and nothing happens. Can I do a uh, arcana check of some kind to see if I can recognize maybe the runes that are magical or anything like that? Well, yeah, can I help roll arcana for that. And uh, no, you can't help him yet. Okay. 15. So you, uh, when you do the Arcana check, you don't really recognize any of the markings on the a quill holder that you found or on the quill upon uh, further examination. Okay. And then, uh, Harry, if you want to roll uh, history, go ahead and do that. All right. Eighteen. All right. So you grab a hold of it and uh, study it, and you do recognize some of the markings on it as something that you've researched uh, previously. Um, and you realize that this was a holy relic, a holy relic, Jesus. Um, your intuition tells you it's a holy relic. The markings you recognize uh, as those you've seen on previous holy relics. I inform the men. This would, is a holy would, relic. Would Harry know if these are? Uh, would Harry know if these relics are safe or or not? He wouldn't know off the top of his head. He would recognize them as powerful magic items, but he would okay. need books to research uh, to be sure of what the item is and to understand the full weight of its power. Uh, does. Okay. Uh, do they, does Harry, Harry, do you know if, uh, what religion that this could be a part of? Do I? Yes. Okay. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Just what I need. It's quite obviously the religion of, <laughs> insert name here. <laughs> I have it written down. I had it set up for Liv, but she abandoned us. Abandoned. <laughs> Destitute. <laughs> Lonely. Uh, while I'm doing this, 
Uh, where are you, um, Brady? Uh, just to double check, um, did I come into the scene? Because I would just be walking up the hill if um, if if I if they've been doing stuff for enough time, I would just be walking into the scene more or less. Are you going straight there? I would because I don't have anything else in mind yet. Okay. Um, I mean, so, I would look around for like the party and the priest, but I would be heading straight towards from the leather to the burned down temple. I would just be like, oh, is there anything along the way? If I don't see anybody, I'm not going to stop. Okay, so it's then that you kind of enter and uh, walk in and say like, hey, what's everybody doing? Like, check out my new armor. Kind of an uh, attitude. Yeah, I am uh, covering my crotch and um... hey guys, what's up? Uh, I'm sexually confused. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a bird thing hey. or? It's it's a song thing. Uh, song bird thing. Uh, tweet tweet. We could talk about it later. You guys seem to be in the middle of important stuff. <laughs> Can I help you? I point to the items we found. Uh, See, this we is found the these. Item? We found this quill holder and a box. Oh, I see. Uh, did you need help with any of them? Um, we, have, we have not touched the box yet. We aren't sure what to do with it. We don't know oh. much about the quill. Um, and we, we do know the, hist the, the religion associated with the the box, but we haven't opened it or anything. Yes, oh, it's I the see. religion of null. Null, like nothing. <laughs> Actually, I cannot find it. I wrote all of the stuff down. I'm missing a whole page. I'll have to oh. tell you uh, <laughs> what the religion uh, it's from is later, and you'll uh, learn more about it when you uh, get somewhere where there are books for you to be able to look it up. But you're quite positive that it is a religious relic. And maybe it very powerful. It's somewhat magical, or maybe magical, and um, it has a lid or a way to open it that we can easily see. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the quill. The box you don't know anything about yet. Okay. Uh, well, if you seem to know so much about the quill, do you want me to look at the box, or did you guys have a fair go at it? Not yet. I put the quill back. <laughs> And I guess we'll look at the box. I'll come up to Harry and see if I can help him investigate the box or magic investigate. I don't know. I'll go ahead and roll investigation then. Do I get advantage from being helped? Uh, yes. And oh, Bart. Oh, I don't have any Bart. Let me get it. That's a little better. 11. Uh, you don't notice anything uh, super special about it. It uh, looks give very it to the rest old of the group. and remedial. It is a box. That is true. It is a box. <laughs> well, why don't we give it to Gal or Jean? Maybe they have a keener eye. Gail, you look a little different. Thanks for noticing, Harry. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, really hairy. I mean, not Harry, Harry, but Harry oh, I on the I body. Was Harry? Well, yes. Yeah. Harry's facial hair it, it inspired me, and I grew out this nice beard here. And I'm going it's to. It's very beard. lovely in cold weather. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, found it. And the religion is? It is the uh, signal, signet, rather, of the god demigod Neralis, just like the academy was named after. Oh, Ooh. shit. I could not remember the name of the life of me. Is that Neralis? Neralis. N-A-R-A-L-I-S. That's the academy Harry Wilde went to? No. Neralis Anilor. That's the academy in the large city, the Moravian capital. 
I went to whack. Oh. And, I, and you, I think you said before that Harry was aware, like when we asked about that, that academy, you said, yeah, Harry knows all about this academy, this other academy in Rovia City, right? So she said we all did. But, like, it's just like, oh, we all did. It's the yeah. capital. You know of the it. In, uh, and there is a university there. Yeah. So do we know this is a good academy <laughs> or a bad academy? <laughs> a bad academy, if you will. <laughs> it's essentially the kind of the only major education institution. So it is kind of a public facility uh, for nobility. Well, I say, well, we have an equivalent, and Harry goes off on a tangent to God, apparently, about the benefits of whack over the other institute. So, so uh, Harry kind of reveals what he knows about uh, the... Uh, God Duralis, uh, with his focus on history. Harry, you tell them uh, that Neralis was a god of death. He ensured souls of the elven departed uh, and reached their proper afterlives. He was also known as a rare healer. He was a lesser elven deity, so he wasn't one of the larger gods. But he was responsible for both suffering and alleviation of pain, healing, as well as death. Sounds like a nice fellow. The, do you guys think we should open the box? We, at least we're all together now? Yeah. Go for it. Do it. You want, Harry, do you want to do the honors, or do you want me? Or? Well, I guess I shall since I brought it. And Harry gingerly opens the box. Uh, when you open the box, the uh, lid that you lift off is incredibly heavy for something so small. It definitely doesn't match uh, with the size of the lid itself for the stone box that is carrying it. Uh, once you open it up, you see inside there is a sliver of what appears to be a black jewel kind of like an onyx but it's just a sliver it's clearly been broken off of something else is there anything magic about it <laughs> not that you realize oh gosh do you I... have any magic spells or anything that you would like to uh, let me see. Let me investigate see. Investigate further. I can detect poison and disease. Nice. Heck, why not? It might be poisoned or diseased. True. I'll cast po to detect poison and disease. <laughs> For this duration, you can sense the present and location of poisons, poisonous creatures, and diseases within 30 feet of you. You can also ID the type of poison, poisonous creature, or disease in each case. Can penetrate most barriers, but is blocked by one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood or dirt. So you do not detect any type of poison or disease coming out of this box. Or anywhere around you in the 30 feet radius. Well, that's a relief. I tell the group there is no poison or disease on it, but I don't know what else there is about it. I I say uh, to Birdman and Gene, you guys know about magic and stuff. Um, do you sense anything, or do you, is there any indication that you might know of this item? Hmm. I look at Gene if he has a response, because Burnman seems to have something. Um, I was going to say that uh, I might have magic, but I, I'm not super studied. Birdman, do you believe in magic? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Harry, can you pass me the box? I pass them the box. I walk 5, 10, 15, 20, 
Don't follow me. 25, 30. I go around the corner. I open the box, see if it explodes. Oh, gosh. Oh, the box is open. The box oh. has nothing. There's nothing inside of it. I walk back. There is a, there is a little piece of stone, of, like, onyx. There was a, a gem or it. something in there. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, there's, My like, mistake. a fragment, like, a sliver of yeah. a gem in there. Okay, I pick up It's the... very small. It's, like, the size of a, uh, a corn kernel. All right. I pick up the sliver to see if a nuclear explosion goes off. Nothing happens. Okay. I walk back. Guys, it's just well, a rock. That's what I got. <laughs> uh, oh, wait, sorry. Can I fake being like, Ooga Booga, magical spella? <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> ah! oh, oh, I'm okay. Oh, God, that was tough. Are, are you all right? Oh, I, I lean on Jean like I'm exhausted. Okay. Oh, Lord. Someone yes. get this man some water. Uh, please, Gel. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, oh, there's yeah, this onyx sliver in here. Uh, I I suggest that maybe we go check on uh, the priest and see if he knows anything more about these objects so that he can enlighten us. Guys, I have a theory. What if um, you know. Somebody knows the uh, the value of the mayor, of his daughter, of his stepson. Somebody along the chain, you know, that demon attack might be targeted, you know. The priest is the only guy who knew Abyssal. Do you guys think this was like an in-town job or like an outside city job? Is someone trying to like... I know we don't have enough clues, but, you know... Do you think was... somebody might be trying to deceive us? Should we be more careful? Don't know. It seems odd that the church where they were doing research burned down. Mm. And then the mayor's and then the mayor, the guy came into town to investigate. Perhaps he knows more than he lets on. Uh the new husband? Or yes. Is it... Okay. okay. I hate to be yeah. suspicious, but it I, is a I, little odd. I, I agree. I, I agree. I'm very uh, suspicious of Oki, and um, but uh, I think we need to. We've searched here now. I think we need to search the other sites to see if there's any other uh, similarities between the scenes. I see. Yes, or you're right. Maybe we should check check out the uh, barns as well. But we should probably go back to the mayor, unless you guys know where the priest is. I don't. Yeah, we can do either one. We can go back to check on that, or we can go to the barns, whatever you guys are leaning I towards. Think, I think we should go to the mayor before we go to the barns. Okay. Because he probably has a reward for us, correct? The one that I didn't negotiate well? Yeah, you should have a reward. I, I think I remember it was uh, 200 gold a piece, something like that. I remember. That was a joke. Mm -hmm. I know, yeah. I actually couldn't remember, so I was like, maybe. <laughs> was it? <laughs> so he said like, <laughs> something super cheap, but I can't remember. So, so Jean, Harry, do you agree? Do you want to go to the mayor's uh, house now? Or? I agree. Um, Let's swing by the tent really quick and just make sure the priest isn't here. I didn't think oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we should ch check this tent area as well, maybe, over here, because, I don't know, maybe there's something going on there. This is the tent area, by the way. This next I'm at the tent right? area. <laughs> I'll pocket the onyx sliver, but the box is, like, stupid heavy, right? I think... Let me put it in my backpack. Okay, yeah, I'll put it in, in your backpack, Harry, with the box and the sliver. Yeah. I think it'd make more sense for Gene or Birdman to search this area because last time we searched around here when he was here, we found some magical things. Maybe there's something they would recognize that would mean nothing to go. Okay, yeah. I will take a look um, depending on what Cricket would like from us. So, who's looking around? And... Um, I will look for 
any clues of maybe his crazed disappearance or some sort of magical item? Roll uh, investigation. Hiya! 22. Good call, go. So you uh, recognize that uh, where the priest's cot was earlier, that his robe and blanket are missing. Outside of that, everything looks uh, discombobulated and a mess. Mess of charred, open bottles and glassware and just bits and bubbles uh, piled all up. Lots of dried herbs that are starting to mold. I sniff the dry herb. Is this the ganja? <laughs> Is this Zaza? <laughs> Is this the za? Roll medicine. Oh god, what is that? Medicine? Do a medicine check for me. A twelve. You recognize after uh, deeply inhaling, it is not the ganja. Damn. Ah. This man was a drunk. <laughs> Who else is looking around the tent? Uh, I'm having Gee, a look too, a look. just for anything that catches my eye. Nothing specific. Uh, all right, roll investigation then as well. Eighteen. You have a plus zero. Yeah. (laughs) You see on the table, uh, there. There are a couple of uh, the same candlesticks that uh, Harry found on the table made out of the same metal that the quill is made out of it's like crudely hammered kind of like bronze interesting Uh, outside of that you don't see uh much other than the mess okay anyone else gee you Uh, noticed this mess, right yep cool i'll peek inside Gail, I cut you off. I, I was going to walk around the church and look to see if I saw any kind of tracks or markings of anything that came in, you know, or any kind of signs of blood, footprints, broken branches, anything to kind of just a general check all of walking around the church looking for any, anything I can find. Larry, roll investigation. Second roll. Oh, no good. Okay. Thirteen. Uh, you kind of see the same as them. It's just, it's a disaster. It's a mess. Ooh. There's, you know, glassware and herbs everywhere, but it doesn't look like anything important it hasn't been gleaned from it already. And Gel. You are looking around the burn site? Yeah, I'm just walking around the whole exterior of the church while they're doing that, just looking for any kind of markings or any kind of footprints or any kind of broken branches, blood, any kind of signal that of people being here or something happening, coming in, going out. All right. Uh, roll uh, perception for me. Oh, I wish I had advantage. A seven. Uh, you see just uh, mud. Just mud and ash. Little puddles. Everything's been rained on and nothing particular stands out. Okay. I head back to the group and tell them I didn't see anything. We should probably get back to the mayor. Yeah, it's been about an hour and a half that you guys have okay. gone at this point. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right, let's go see the mayor. Uh, sorry, just to double check before we leave this map, guys. What did we find? Just the mayor is missing, most likely? Or sorry, the priest is discombobulated Somewhere. and missing? Yeah, he, he's not here. His robe is gone. We sure. found a box. And okay, we cool. found a holder for a pen. 
Yeah, I pass anything that we share. I just want to communicate it to the team so that we're all not like somebody knows one thing and not everybody knows the other thing. Yeah. Cool. Let's go to the mayor. So uh, when you get to the Lord's Manor, uh, Jean Carlo opens the door and he looks at you with very tight lips and says, was I not here? You're late. I'm sorry, Jean Carlo. I had a date. He rolls his eyes and you can hear him mumbling under his breath, but you can't hear what he's saying. He says, follow me afterwards. I asked John Carlo for here. somebody we saved. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. <laughs> we just saved his life. He's like, John <laughs> yeah, uh, Carlo kind of says over his uh, shoulder, uh, "The priest has settled in here in the guest house, as the Lord offered earlier. He is not well, and oh. he leads you back into the office of Bailey Shuff, who is there waiting." Hello, Mayor. We are back with some news. Well, 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 he says when you come in. I am not accustomed to waiting for those I have in my employ. Come back to see Giancarlo abused and having him not be able to fully explain what happened. And I'm sitting here wondering, anxious, waiting for you all. I know, I know. John Carlo pissed and cried. It is a terrible scene. I understand. But Gal, Harry, Jean, and I would like to confirm that there are some bandit and devilish activities on the road outside of Hartsfelt. It took some time to confirm the information as... We were gone for over an hour, but we would like to sincerely apologize because we wouldn't like to provide you with incomplete information. And just who exactly did you tell of your exploits? Um, sexual or otherwise? <laughs> the only ones that I'm interested in, those of which the mission I sent you and my esteemed servant who's been injured in the process. Of course. Well, um... We investigated the caravan that you had told us about. When Giancarlo had turned to leave, the ambush started, and some human-looking bandits on the road attacked with some sort of hellish hounds, um, almost causing our death. Not that you care, but uh, we are here to tell you that we have defeated and dispatched of them. Um, another clue on the notch of this bedpost... Uh, his eyes light up, he, uh, hearing that you have defeated them. And he says, I apologize for the risk to your lives, but you understood the nature of the assignment. And yet you have not answered my question, which is just who did you tell about these exploits in the last hour, or however long you've been gone, and not here? Ah, I see. Well, in my case... I was gravely wounded and had to better defend myself. I was speaking with Derek, a lovely man married to your townsfolk, Mary. Um, a man questioning many things at this point, but otherwise we were just merely making sure the priest was okay. And upon our mistake, we realized it is quite likely, as John Carlo said, he has arrived here safely, though we are aware his health is not well. The leather worker. Just what yes. questions did he have for you? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like, around yeah. very confused, like, <laughs> you dare laugh at me? Oh, God. Um, his questions were more concerning, romantic, and the like, as he did not have any abyssal or infernal knowledge. But we have learned that there are maybe more gods of death at play here than we would have liked previously to have known about. But we have not shared our activity with anybody besides Giancarlo, mostly because, again, we saved his life and we know how dear he is to you. Gods of death, you say? What, what have you found? What leads you to believe this? Um, <clears throat> Harry? <clears throat> I bring out the pen holder. 
and place it on the desk and explain that we know the symbols belong to the god of death, uh, Neralis. But other than that, we have no additional clues as to what's happening or why there are hellhounds here. And this pen doesn't really explain that either. Very interesting. Neralis is a local legend. One of the old, old gods. Mr. Not many around here know much about him any longer. Just about the school and the city, of course. But you found this, you say. What does it do? We have not identified some of the magical nature, but we hope to find a strong enough wizard who can. In the meantime, I could identify this, but I lack the funding to do so, as it is quite an expensive spell. Ah, uh, yes, I did promise. Reward, as well as what I've already provided you in gear. Oh, yeah. Giancarlo, and he kind of nods at Giancarlo, who, like, leaves the room. I will take care of this reward and funding that you are so desperately in need of, and I appreciate the knowledge on the priest. It was not long before my men returned with him uh, unconscious, and he has been out ever since you left. I fear he is gravely ill. Is he in the gardens as... He's in the in guest the... house. Could we check on him, your, your mayorship? What do you want with a man that's asleep and being tended to by my physician? Uh, um, mostly I don't to think he has much to tell you. It you are I, the most knowledgeable. I have recently come into possession of a spell that can identify disease. Perhaps we can aid the physician in determining what's wrong with him, so he could get cured faster. Now that, my good man is information. He looks back at Gravy like very disappointed. <clears throat> and he's very impressed by Harry. Well, I said was one thing, but I won't <laughs> say anything. I'm hiding my That I believe there. I can uh, arrange. But what what did you find? Why where are my goods? Why are they taking them? Um I, I say that we, we found a uh a, the carriage or the um that had left here and it was fully destroyed and we found some lids that indicated it. It was from the, to ensure that it was his carriage that had his name and stuff information on it. So, Oh my good man. And he like takes it out of your hand and he's like, yes, this is mine. Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, do you recognize this pocket watch by chance? And I produced the pocket watch from earlier. He holds out his hand for you to uh, place it in and like for waves sure, it forward. Yeah. Yep, yep. I drop it into his hand. He takes a look. No, I can't say that I have. It doesn't look particularly valuable. And he hands it back to you. Thank you. But you found this in the carriage? In my wagon? The the pocket watch, you mean, sir? Yes. Uh, yes, amongst some of the rubble. And um, we found some things on the bandits and whatnot. We're not sure if they were robbing your townsfolk or just your carriages. What types of things? Um, Some weapons, some... Um, some loose change. Very, you know, copper, right? And, uh... <laughs> Uh, uh, I actually strangely found something that belonged to Gel, so I'm not sure how they had got their hands on such uh, a diverse amount of items. We think that they might have a network inside or out of your city, maybe a hideout. I don't know if that's possible. I don't. I look to the team. Very shrugs. Well, I had your bird from the traveling merchant. Maybe they eclipsed upon him on the road and found some of your things from him bandits would make mm. sense you say that they had hellhounds with them yes if my 
team and I are certain there was some sort of um, maybe devilish or demonic ha uh, hounds. They breathed fire and nearly burned uh, John Carlo to a crisp. Before I heroically saved him. <laughs> Hmm. That is very troublesome. And he sits back in his chair and he like, clasps his hands together and thought. Well, I'm very glad that no serious injury became John Carlo. I don't know how I'd run this place without him. At that moment, he comes back in, smirking. As he hears his master pumping him up. He has a bag that kind of jingles with coin for you all. Um, I don't remember what the ransom was. I honestly it was don't 20 know. You said 20 gold. It was oh, 20 okay. gold for the whole party, so it was garbage. Yeah, I think it was like 20. We got equipment. So he uh, yeah. sits the 20 gold on the table and he's like, uh, has agreed to, and then he pulls out another 10 gold. And he says, I'll give you 10 gold for uh, whatever that bauble is you found in the church. I'm sure the priest would be interested to have it. Which bauble was he referring to? The pen or the, the pen? The, the pen, the quill yeah. holder. The quill holder? Well, I don't genius. think you told him about the... Yeah. No. no, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't want to, yeah. The box or whatever, so... Yeah. I don't know if we should just sell something. <laughs> like, it just seems um, suspicious to me that we sell something that it's like that's not worth anything uh, here. This is definitely it, evidence but... for our investigation. We'll be happy to return it once we know if it's value, uh, its value to the investigation. Well, you said you found it in my church, correct? Correct. And you were trying to keep something that belonged to my church before you got here? I was willing to give you the 10 gold for finding it. No one discussed anything about you. We're not trying to you. keep it. We're not trying to keep it. We're just trying to utilize it for our investigation. And if it's not required at the end, we'll return it to you happily. Well, if it aids in the investigation and you have intentions on returning it at the end, I agree. But I want to make it very clear that anything that you find in any parts of this town belong to me. Of course. Of course, your mayorship. We are merely just an extension of your hand, and we would love to give you a complete version of the facts um, of anybody targeting you or your lovely daughter. We would not like for any danger to come to your town. Well, I very much appreciate that. You have been our saviors up until this point, so I have no reason to doubt you. However, I do have some questions for you regarding the priest. Of course. Before we begin that questioning period, do you know if your daughter and her new husband, Oki, are nearby? Not that you should know. Well, I did hear that they were here this morning, but seeing as how they're on their honeymoon, they probably do not desire to be disturbed. I understand. And your questions, your mayorship? Yes, I am very interested in what the state of the priest was when you arrived. Um, I do. Yeah. Gosh. Uh, can I ask something above the table, or do you want to stay in the scene, Cricket? Go ahead. Uh, do you guys want me to lie to this motherfucker? <laughs> or... <laughs> Puddle. <laughs> I mean, I could say, hey, I gave him that piece of paper, or I, I could just be like... I would just keep it vague. Okay, because so... Because we don't I... know that the paper did it. Yes, okay, so... But reading it clearly... Okay, okay. So I'll keep it vague, so that keep means I'm ca I have to kind yeah. of deceive him a bit. Um, your mayorship, uh... It was clear to me, I'm not sure about my team, that um, he might have been undergoing some sort of maybe illness, but further investigating his tent as of late, um, his discombobulation is clear. We're not sure of his mental state, and uh, 
were worried that maybe uh, there could be some sort of <laughs> bird flu <laughs> going oh around the town. Um, bird Yes, uh, bird flu is merely a term for something that can fly around quickly and not directly transmitted by birds, of course. <laughs> and did he collapse when he you were there? Uh... He did seem to have a bit of a fainting spell, but the strong, lithe muscles of Gal kept him upright. As you can tell, he is a very sound and firm individual. Yes, they brought him back already unconscious, and I sent them immediately upon you coming in and, and telling me. It couldn't have been but mere minutes. Ah, that is strange. Maybe he had fallen unconscious after we left. That is worrisome, to be sure. Maybe we should have our ranger friend Harry uh, check him for any diseases. That is very, very worrisome. Very worrisome. <laughs> and you did not touch him or provide anything for him to eat or drink? I did not feed him. But the only thing in our contact was just making sure he didn't fall to the ground and further injure himself. Well, I apologize for the appearance of accusations, but Reese is a very important man to me and to these parts and what's going on now. And he seemed to be fine before you folks arrived here this morning and very worried for him. And now you want to see him, although he's unconscious. It strikes me as if you did have ill will towards him, you'd be out to finish the job. I... I you, sir, we have no ill will. He was quite unwell when we found him there. And I would be more than happy to take a look at him. And if you want to send Giancarlo or anyone else to supervise, I completely understand, given the circumstances. You can even send your guard with us if you are worried about any unwanted actions from our end. Well, I'm satisfied by your answers, and oh, yeah. mostly satisfied by the offer of the young Mr. Wilde here, of using this spell to hopefully diagnose and find our priest secure as quickly as possible. Shall I have Giancarlo escort you to the room of the priest? No, no, no. Just tell us where it is. <laughs> well, uh, as I see it, only Mr. Wilde needs to go if he's to cast a spell disease. Why would the rest of you need to go? Great question. It's just with all of this uncouth possible assassinations we like to travel in pairs would you mind if one of our allies traveled with harry i can see two two of you and two of my guards um i look to maybe gel unless gene is ready to go but i think i trust gel to protect us more <laughs> i can go if you want yeah up to you harry uh so gene, gel and harry want? I follow the way to the priest's room. All right. So John Carlo uh, goes around the corner here and he meets up with the two guards. You guys travel to the rear of the down here. Manor. Yes. And enter the guest house, guest cottage, where the priest is laying in bed with the man in robes, who is the uh, local doctor of sorts, tending to him. Don Carlo announces you uh, as you enter, and he says, uh, The Lord has sent. Uh, these two heroes kind of titters at that. T 
to uh, aid in the diagnosis of the priest. The guards will stay to make sure that there is no ill will. Good evening. The doctor kind of bows at you, looking a little suspicious. I bow back as is customary and polite greeting and introduce myself. So I'm Harry Wild from the Wolves Academy from Children, and this is my compatriot, Gail Ross. And we are here to assist in whatever way we can. Is your detect poison and disease, is that a cantrip or is it a spell? It's a spell, spell right? Yes, it's <clears> a spell. <throat> so it's down right now, right? I've got you just two more slots. It. Okay. Do I have one more? I've got at least one more. I think I have one right. slot left. That's fine. My last one for today. So the doctor kind of bows and then steps away. And uh, let's take a 10 minute break because Piggy needs to go outside and we need to feed them. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. All right, be back in 10 minutes. Yep. Sounds good.
I'm back. I don't know if anybody else is here. Hello. Word of 
Pretty much. You have cats? Have one or you cat. have a cat? Yeah. Yeah. She's what's old. What's her name? Or what's her name? Um, her name is Luna. She's about eleven. I got her like a year and a half ago. Okay. Cool. <sighs> She usually comes up to me at this time and is like, pay attention to me. So <laughs> that's what I'm like. Oh, hey, baby, or whatever. It's not My cats human. do that too. Yeah. So Only when I'm at the computer tape disc. I know, yeah. Unfortunately, I'm not talking to you when I say, hey, baby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no spice in D&D? &D. Yeah, I don't even think I like am that nice to my girlfriend. I'm no. like that nice to my cat. I'm, it's always my cat. I'm like, hey, baby, how are you? What's wrong? People, I'm like, what's up? During the guild, I usually wars, go with you. you. Be a lot nicer. Yeah. Hey guys, please pay attention to me. I'm 16. <laughs> how long ago was that that we played Guild Wars? That was a long time ago now. Yeah. It'd be t at least 10 years. At least. That's so funny to say at least 10 years. That means I've known you It probably as long as I, well, almost as long as I've known my wife. I mean, well, no, I mean, I've known her a little bit longer, but yeah. As long as I've been married to my wife. Almost, yeah. I must have gotten married with her right around that time. I w the game came out August 28th, 2012. Yeah, which makes sense because I would have been. I was telling you I was sixteen, and I begged my mom for Guild Wars two, and she's like, "If you pass this lifeguarding course and get a chaw ball, I'll get the game for you." I was like, "Sick!" So that's really funny, yeah, because I got it like December twenty twelve, and then played it for like a year or two. Good game. I played it because I never played Guild Wars one, but like somebody, one of my friends had, and he like said it was amazing, and I was like, well, maybe I should try Guild Wars two. Funny for you to say Guild Wars one, because for some reason I never thought that there was a Guild Wars one. Really? It was. Really I mean, it makes sense. It's just. Yeah. I, think it was way I don't know than when Guild Wars two, to be honest. But was it? It's just me. Yeah. yeah. My friend raved about it back then. He was like, Guild Wars 1 was amazing. April 28th, Guild Wars probably just called Guild Wars at the time. <laughs> Guild Wars Prophecies originally named Guild Wars, yeah. 2005. Do y'all ever see that, that show with that lady in it? And she was talking about like World War One. She was like, they were a bit pessimistic calling it World War One, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Where she like she talks to these these like experts in like history and stuff like that, and she just plays dumb the whole time and messes with. Oh them. yeah, Conk or Conk. Conk yeah. Conk. Philomena Conk or something. Those things are awesome. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to watch that with G, but I was like, he won't really like this. Like, <laughs> I think I struggle with her because. It's so over the top satire that sometimes I struggle yeah. with that stuff. Where I'm like. Oh my god, you're actually in a room with a guy trying to be honest with you, and you're just like... <laughs> it's like, uh, I mean, Ollie G started that way, and Borat, but they're just more crude, you know, like... Yeah. It's British humor, yeah. too. A lot of people don't like that. And it turns out Borat was, uh, or I can't remember who, I think it was Borat or Ali G had, like, a massive amount of women. Who were like, one. hey, uh, he actually sexually harassed the fuck out of me. <laughs> Sasha Baron Cohen. Yeah, Sasha Baron Cohen. I mean, looking like that, are you doubtful that he'd be sexually harassing women for attention? Yeah, begged someone to go naked and then actually had to hire a body double. <laughs> Please go naked. Is everybody back? Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. I have no concept of time when to go on a break, so...
All right, so you guys are in the room with Laprise. The doctor kind of steps back and allows your room to do what you need to do. What you do? What do I do? I. What's it? Oh, I use my last spell slot to cast Detect Disease and Poison. Do I detect disease or poison? Uh, only visible to your eyes is a gray aura coming off of the priest suddenly. It uh, slowly raises like a fog off of its body, not moving very fast, but staying very close to his skin, uh, completely surrounding his body. And you smell a rot of sulfur and death creeping off him as if his body has been dead and rotting in the hot sun. Ooh. The cave for many weeks. And it becomes overwhelming to you. Harry he, covers is, his mouth. Is he is he breathing? He is breathing very I'm gravely ill, and I describe what I smell. Do I know what disease? Well, I what disease is it? Sorry, I'm DCing a bunch. Oh, you're fine. I just have to turn the uh, VPN off for a second. Oh, okay, I'm good. Uh, does he what? Uh, do, what disease does he have? So you uh can recognize uh, what you've only heard tell of in readings, but left a great impression upon you as the abyssal rot or abyssal plague. Ooh, I tell the doctor. Is there a cure? Do I know of a cure? So what you can recall. Is the abyssal plague is a disease that's inflicted upon victims who come in contact with a void harrow. Uh, this condition and its malevolence is divine in nature. Its victims are found to have used symbols or scripts associated with the worship of abyssal deities. It's fatal what? unless it's cured. Or unless the or if the victim can is transformed into a plague demon. From what you remember, would he have had to have done demonic worship to get the disease, or could he have just come into contact with demonic worship materials to get the disease? So he could have come in contact with demonic worship materials. Um, but the primary way to contract the disease is to consume uh, the void arrow, so, such as uh, contaminated food or drink, uh, coming in contact with the disease itself or the blood of an infected creature. Do or I know how long he's probably text. had this? Or through a text? You do not know how long he's probably had this, but he could have also been attacked by a plague demon. So there's no telling where he got this? At right now? There's no telling where he got this um, from what you see now. So once the infection takes root, uh, you remember the signs now uh, that you see it playing. Uh, he'll start to become covered in sores. Um, the sores will be red crystalline and will contain flecks of gold. You see some of them starting to raise across his wrists already the sores will spread across his body um he will become incredibly contagious incredible. um and if he is awake he will have a superior strength and be murderous basically do i know how long he's got left No, he just, because he's just now breaking out in the sores of the plague, it's likely that uh, it won't be long from there. Mm -hmm. So it 
it will be less than two days before he starts to be completely covered in the sores. Ooh. And then he's he will start to uh, become irritable. He'll remain unconscious, but he will become violent. Um, did you, what did you say could cure him? Is it something that we can do? Uh, expose him to divine magic. Okay. And I... it only worked if the spell is cast before the plague takes root in his body. So the only way that you know of to cure it is, um, to cast a spell before he becomes deeply infected. Now that he's got sores, he's deeply infected. So the only thing that could probably cure him at this point is wish. It's possible, yeah, because Crap. you don't know of any other way. Well, maybe a restoration, but I don't think we have that spell. I urge everyone in the room to step away from him and tell them the deet. Say there's nothing we can do at this point. The doctor looks really scared and, and kind of just like backs out of the room. I I glance at the priest and follow him out of the room and I urge Gil to get out. Okay. Um I ask Harry if he knows if it's uh if it's contagious or anything upon touch or anything like that, anybody that's touched him since he's started showing some symptoms or would he be he would be a uh contagious at this point wouldn't he yes he's incredibly contagious and is it by touch it's it's it will be the same as uh any way to get it which is um through the blood of an infected being which he is being attacked by him so any bodily fluids scratches anything like that okay so we should be fine as long as we haven't drunk after him. Or if there's any food or drink shared. And then, of course, any uh, raw contact with the disease, like if you had been infected at the same time that he was. Okay. We should be okay. Yeah. Not knowing how he was infected or when, though, you don't know if you are contagious or infected or anything like that yet. We might need to consider finding some sort of divine energy and going a uh, using that. We should be we should be finding divine energy just to be safe. He could have infected us at this point. We don't know. Do we know? We need to lock him away. He we cannot help him anymore. Do we notice if the doctor is showing any symptoms, the guy that's been taking care of him? The doctor's any, any left early the room. stage. What's that? The doctor but, left the room. But we, we saw him before, him. right? Did he did he look sickly in any way? You didn't notice anything about him when he was there. Okay. I you didn't look. We, we need to tell the mayor and tell him to quarantine the manor, basically. Okay. So we need to figure out a fine a source of divine energy and get everyone in this mansion in contact with it. Do you want to tell the guards that they should uh, maybe not let anybody come in here and stand guard? Yeah, I'll ask the guards who came with us to inform the others. Are you guys going back to meet with them, or are yeah. some of you still staying there? I'm going to tell the guards to you, tell no one to leave the mansion, and okay. then I'm going to go to the mayor. I think we're going to go together, but the, the guards are here, and John Carlo should probably not be hanging around. Yeah. And the um the other two you guys um are still in the chambers with the mayor. What y'all talking about? Those Olympics, huh? 
See that one about the pole vulture? See that guy fail with his dick? I know. Yes. Everybody did, unfortunately, for that poor guy. Says the mayor. <laughs> oh, man. I'm really glad that we solved uh, such a big problem. This abyssal thing should be over in a blink of an eye. Did you uh, folks have any of these rays and escargots they sent up earlier? Some of the best uh, I've ever had. The rays and escargot. You know, I am feeling a bit peckish, but uh, I don't know. I had some oatmeal earlier regurgitated into my mouth. He kind of cringes and like gestures half heartedly towards the basket. Wait. Sitting on the table with his baked goods. You got uh, the baked goods from us. Who sent the escargot? That's what the baked goods are called. Escargot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. The spirals. I actually was thinking about escargot. Well, yeah. I mean, they should probably figure it out, and your guy will be healed in no time. What do you think, G? Yeah, I, I got complete faith in their skills. This is so small. I want this to be big. Hello? 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 I can't look at anybody's... ...character sheet suddenly. In this D&D shit. Oh. It's weird. In the activity. Is anybody in the party, uh... Divine spellcaster. We had a paladin. I, I am. I mean, I'm a fallen angelish or a protector angel, but I don't necessarily. I don't think that's a paladin or cleric. So. I'm more well. It's typically clerics, druids, rangers, paladins, and blackguards. But I'm more wondering uh, because divine magic is given by gods, uh, genes. Oh yeah, Jean's are deliverance from death. Oh, uh, from a, by a god. What exactly he practices now? I haven't looked at all of your character sheets since you've updated them. So, gee, uh, why don't you share with the mayor if you have divine spells or arcane spells? <laughs> are you a studied with uh, sorcerer or not? That's a that's a great question. Um, most of my magic is you know in the conjuration enchantment areas of the arcane um so i don't i don't necessarily have anything divine uh but you know i have to learn and maybe study to get more spells do you find that they come naturally to you or yeah mostly it's uh it's uh i think it's all about intention you know ah. Well, Mr. Mayor, that's our story, and we're sticking to it. Um, the other two come back, come rushing back in at that moment. Ah, they must have solved it. Mary looks stricken. I have a, I have a question, and I think I know the answer to it, but uh, above the table. But um, since we traveled here with the Palandid, would they still be in the town as an NPC character or anything else that we could interact with? Or is that just like deleted from our story? Are you, ta are you talking to me? Yes. Yeah, is Zeno an NPC at this point? Uh, Zeno's not in the story any longer. You have no okay. idea what happened to them. Uh, they weren't there when you woke up. Okay. You Sounds suspect good. they fled. Okay. I just wanted to confirm because if there was a paladin in town, we'd probably go talk to the paladin. Okay. But, I'm going to yeah. leave the activity. I'll be right back just in case you see me. Okay. So we come back into the room with them. Can I explain the dire situation to the mayor and say we should quarantine the building and find a source of holy energy? <laughs> Well, and the only thing I can think of Ryan would have Israel. been our priest himself. He's been a practitioner since birth. 
could do things I've never seen anyone else do. Perhaps the pen holder? Am I not considered the DM right now? Maybe uh, that's why. If you exit and joined it as a PC, probably, yeah. Uh, I left. I didn't have to do anything special the first time, but now every time I enter the activity. Oh, wait, where the fuck? If you click Sorry, the cogwheel at the top, scroll down to where it says exit, it should say rejoin as player or rejoin as GM, depending on what you are. Rejoin as GM. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Is the pen holder considered a holy artifact? What you suspect about it, it is considered a holy artifact by you because you recognize the symbol symbols on it um, as those that would frequently be on holy artifacts, but you have no way of confirming without research or the priest or someone to ask. Uh, if you make that known, the mayor will say, you know, I have an extensive library here. You're more than welcome to utilize it to the best of your abilities to help uh, my friend the priest and to stop this uh, plague from spreading. That's the last thing that we can deal with right now. I do admit that, and I rush to the library. Harry so. begins to speed read. Speed reading, activate. <laughs> The library is down here in this corner. Oh. I have a trait for this. I'm still with Harry then. And now I can see your character sheets. Yay! Yay! My cloistered scholar is about to come in handy. Get cloistered, idiot. Get cloistered, fool. <laughs> you can do it. You, you have free it, and easy access to the majority of the library. I don't know right. something about your traits for that, but let me check your new sheet. He was lighting lights and stuff in there just to set the mood for Harry to help him concentrate. I start throwing <laughs> any relevant book towards Gil to catch. Gil catches. And I get reading. I place the pen holder in front of me for reference, but also am open to other sources of holy energy that we might utilize. We rush to the library, right? Yeah, I think you can. We, we came and saw y'all. Y'all could follow us, yeah. Yes. What's it Come called, on, your trait? It's not in your. It's beyond. under description. Under background. Oh, the court. Yeah, your cloistered scholar thingy. Yes. Yeah, you're just like a loser who can read really fast. Just kidding. yeah, basically. <laughs> hey, it is what it this, is. It's this moment that that's there. <laughs> right. This loser and can possibly save us, or we'll die anyway. <laughs> but we'll find out. So you find a text of ancient relic, um, and you get to the page of speed reading, and you find in it the quill holder and quill. The quill, the quill, the quill. The quill is in fact a, uh, ancient holy relic called the Scrivener's Quill. Scrivener? Only the quill or the quill holder too would be a holy? Together it is one item. Okay. Uh, There's residual the magic yeah. without the quill holder but it is only its full power of a relic when joined together. I put the and quill I'll in the quill holder. Right here. Let me describe this to you. This magical quill has a bronze nib and feather of a rare bird emboldened in the same bronze. A tuned user can write in any language using the quill, even if they are not proficient in the script. 
The quill never runs out of ink and it can write on any surface that is not magical or adamantine. As an action, the attuned user can speak a command word and point the quill at any written text they see within 30 feet. The quill will copy the text onto a blank sheet of paper or parchment that the attuned user is holding, as long as the text is not protected by magic or written in the secret code. I'm going to just link this in the game and I will put it in the library is open. Whoa. That's because it cool. is not in Roll20. As a bonus action, the attuned user can speak a different command word and erase any text they have written or copied with the quill within the last 24 hours. What the, the fuck? text disappears without a trace, leaving the paper or parchment blank. They can erase up to one page of text per bonus action. I attune. <laughs> you attune. Do I feel less to so you see? Are, you are completely focused on the quill and the book behind it that you were reading before. Undisturbed. You appear to be in heavy meditation. Everyone leaves you alone. The Lord recognizes what you are doing from the priest's many hours in his library. And he comes and he approaches the rest of the group and encourages you all to uh, come get something to eat and then uh, get some rest as you will be there for probably a while. Okay. Well, first yeah. off, before I start attuning, I guess I should ask, do you need to be attuned to, do I, should I attune to it in order to bring out the holy energy to keep people from going demonic? You or do that... need to attune to it. Okay. To do so. Can I'll I do that. Can I ask a question as a new player? Yes. What is attuning? Oh, yeah, good question. Um, so some magic, pretty much any magic item has kind of like two tiers. You can either like get it and use it and kind of understand it on the get go. Or you take about an hour to attune it. Every character has three items they can attune to. So these are so you, kind of anybody a, can attune to something up to three items. It Yes, except some items have the caveat that it's like. This is only for barbarians. Okay. This is only for... So depending on the item, but a lot of items will just be like, a tune takes about an hour, and then you kind of come to an understanding of what the item does. Um, you can even attune to cursed items, but once you're cursed, you can't unattune. Thank so you. it just takes a while. You like You have to spend time with the item. Thank you. So one thing I want to um, specify, because I think this is my fault for being confusing, um, is that it is a magic relic. It is not a holy relic. The, the writings on it, the runes of a sort, are holy writing and runes, but it itself is not a religious relic. So it couldn't save us? So it cannot save you, but it is a magic relic. It might be useful during research, so I guess I'll keep attuning. Yeah, that's really good. That's cool. Gene? What's up? What are you doing? I just fat fingered my spell. But I let the others know the situation before I started tuning. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that seems very valuable. Sounds like a good idea. So the rest of you then um, leave him to a tune and go and follow. Giancarlo and Bailey Schoth to the dining room and have dinner with Bailey Schoth and then uh, Bailey explains to you all that the news has weighed upon him heavily and it's going to be a very long day so he's going to head out and go to bed as soon as dinner is over. 
I ask what's happening? What time the market closes? Well, the ladies typically leave before uh, luncheon, so okay. it's been closed Appreciate for quite it. some time now. But they they open generally around dawn. <laughs> <laughs> he ran away. <laughs> he went to bed. Giancarlo is like hurriedly cleaning things up. Yo, Giancarlo, you got extra rooms for us or what? If you are ready to retire, I can take you to the additional rooms we have prepared for you. Sounds good. Show me where it is. Um, how long will it take him? Uh... Harry to a tune? We said one hour or so, or? Yep. No, it takes, him, it takes him 12 hours to attune to this. Oh, jeez. Wow. Oh. I guess I'll keep doing yeah, it. Long night, dude. <laughs> well, we are potentially going to die, so I guess I'll just skip my long rest. <laughs> I think you can attune while long resting, right? I thought I oh, can I? I thought that was a thing. Maybe that's just for the one hour one. I don't know. Yeah, I think this is like a unique item in some sense. Oh, okay. Can just because it takes longer. So, uh, you can attune during a long rest. Normally. Well, you'll be in a state of meditation. So you'll be resting, essentially sleeping in a position. Nice. Okay. All night. That's good. Giancarlo shows you two rooms. Anything else that you may require before I myself bunker down for the evening? Uh, I'll take a wake up call at sunrise flat. Thanks. Yes, sir. Many bows <laughs> and leaves. And, so, uh, Gravy, are you going to stay with Harry in there overnight? Or are you... Mm -hmm. Harry, you're good? You sleep on the couch in there? Yeah, I'll sleep on the couch just to kind of... I, I think it's good to have somebody with him just in case. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll bring Gravy a, a blanket and pillar from his room or whatever. That's cute. Right, I, whist then... I whistle to sleep. I snore <laughs> when I whistle. The next thing you know... You hear... Uh, Giancarlo singing softly outside your door, Jean and Gil. They're needing us to put us to sleep? No, no he's, he's waking you up. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we've had a long rest now? Yes, sir. I'm going to reset my stuff while we're doing that. And he hears you talking and realizes his job is complete, and he hurries back to preparing breakfast. Nice. Are you tuned? You have attuned. Wow. Congrats. I've done it. Giancarlo comes and fetches everyone and brings you to the dining room where breakfast is prepared. Is this the bathroom that I'm in right now? Or no. the lavatory? Uh, I was going to go brush my teeth, but that's all right. This is the bathroom. Okay. In it now. I'm going to wash up real quick. Wash. Okay. Now I'm going to go to eat. Harry like speed washes his face <laughs> and then runs to horf down breakfast before going back to the library. Also, I don't know why I dried. <laughs> Drew. Drew? Where's the eraser? Billy Sharp uh, greets you as you come into the dining room. Well, is everything complete? How do you feel? What? Quite good, really, for meditating for so long. I'm going to eat this as quickly as I can and get back to my research. We are all counting on you heavily. But do tell me if anyone else finds a breakthrough. I trust that we'll all be hard at work in the library looking for information that may help us. The entire fate of my town is at stake. Yes. I'm going to go into town for a bit, but after that, you know.
course. Okay, so what are we doing? I'm nods towards you. So uh, after he finishes his breakfast, uh, Bailey says, let us go. And then everybody heads back to the library or? Yeah, I need to wait till everyone's together to talk to them and then I'm gonna go into town, so. Okay. Harry, um, I made the, I made a, I created the item so that it can actually be in your inventory. Thank you. And I just attuned to it for you, so you'll see that at the bottom of your inventory, it's attuned. Uh, I will So what is everybody researching? Uh, I'm going to talk to the group first. I'm just going to I'm just said I'm going to go into town. I got some extra crap we don't need. I'm going to sell it and then I'll be back. Do you have anything you want me to sell? Um this pocket watch, just kidding. <laughs> um I I have some stuff if you want to sell it while you're there. Yep. I have a scimitar. And that, 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 I think that's all I have. I have a scimitar you can sell. Cool. Nothing, yeah. So I hand you the scimitar and I take it out of my inventory. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, head to the blacksmith now then. All right, so we're going to the blacksmith. Yep. Sorry, Cricket, to cut everybody off again. Um, G, can you just take that 20 gold we got from earlier and just add it to your inventory? Sure. Yeah, good point. Um, so you head down the hill, you enter the blacksmith's shop, you see Cherry once again hammering away on an anvil near the furnace. Welcome, welcome, she says. Nice to see you again, Cherry. How's it going? Uh, excellent. Good day to you. Good day. Uh, How can I, I help you? I have some uh, stock for you if you're looking to buy. Well, let's see it. I give her three scimitars and a shield. Hmm. Let me just inspect the quality here with a better light. And she goes to fetch a lantern. Of course. Well, I'd be happy to take the shield. I'm low on stock for that and give you a fair price. Uh, 10 gold. I'll take it. And these scimitars. Fortunately, I have a fairly healthy stock of them. What about at a discount? Uh, at a discount, I could probably give you half of the worth, as I'll have to hold on to them for quite some time. Uh, 12 gold apiece. Sounds good. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. And how many are there here? Three. Three? Yep. So 36 and 10, 46 gold. Appreciate it. And what can I send you off with besides all my gold? <laughs> um, uh, gee, can didn't, you... Didn't you look want one of those swords? The rapiers or rapier? whatever? Yeah, a rapier, a longsword. Or a short sword. How much were they? Or a hand crossbow. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, <you're good. laughs> rapier, longsword, hand crossbow prices, please. Yep. So and the then... rapiers that I have, I still only have the two. They're 30 gold apiece. Okay. And uh, long swords, you say? Yes, ma'am. I have two for 20 gold apiece. Okay. And a hand crossbow. Um, you've only got the one hand crossbow, and it's going to run you 80 gold. Jesus. Okay. Can you, uh, can you see, see if they have scale mail as well while you're there? Sure. Do you sell armor? 
Scale mail in particular? Ooh, scale mail. Uh, no, I still haven't had any come in since you folks were come by here. Perfect. Uh, we will take one rapier, please. All right. I am working on a set of scale mail, but it won't be ready for quite some time. I can let you know as soon as I finish it, if you'd Perfect. That would like. be great. And the, uh, just the one rapier? Please. That's 30 gold. Thank you. Here it is. And she kind of trades you the gold. Uh, pleasure doing business with you. It's back to work for me. Busy, busy. Goodbye, Cherry. Safe travels. And I will head back to the manor and give gravy. And she yells after you. Uh, she says, by the way, have you heard... Uh, anything about the tavern owner? Uh, How's he doing? I actually haven't. I'm sorry. Um, is it no okay if I did on Manka? The, could I have passed along that Manka was doing better after that date with Derek to the party? Not yet. You haven't? Okay. Uh, okay, well, just hoping for some news without having to leave my work. <laughs> I'll let you know if I do. Thank you. Bye. And then you said you were going to head back to the manor? Yep. So, meanwhile, everyone's at the manor. Did I not move the fucking thing? Doesn't matter. Great. Sorry. I'm on one today. <laughs> You're doing pretty good. Thanks, Melky. All right, <clears throat> so... Back at the uh, manor, everybody is researching. What's everybody researching? Are you looking for something in particular? Um, Harry or Gail, what are you guys looking into before um, we... Maybe we should split tasks? Yep. Uh, I, I'm looking to see if I can find any information about any kind of divine objects or history around, around the area. Uh, I mean, ho what would it be? Holy or whatever we're looking for? It's a holy like site. A, a holy site or something like that? Yeah. Doesn't it seem awfully convenient that the one holy site we know of was uh, burned down Is and there... then this disease popped up? Oh. That you found the holy relic and then the disease popped up? Is that what you said? That the church was burned down. A holy site. Which could have worked. To like combat and, the dim yeah. Um, either way, uh I was also I'm, gonna that was also my plan, but if y'all have any ideas too, I'm open. I would like to give Bardic to someone, but I you know, I feel like I don't know if Gel has high investigation. I know that Harry does. Or I don't I have know. high perception, but I don't have high investigation. I'll give a bardic to uh, Harry, which is a D6. I think Gail has high investigation. I remember just looking at somebody and being like... No, I don't have do high, investigation? high investigation. I have high perception. I perceive I think, things. Me and Harry have a plus four. So I think... It depends what the skill check would be. But... So I would I get that two on... I roll. Or would uh, I just I'm, roll my I'm own just, d6? I'm just giving you the d6. I just do it because yeah. the, the dice will change as we level up. I got shit. shit. Keep doing this. Why do um, I keep doing this? I guess Gene, Gil and I would both need to do holy sites near the area because that seems like the only thing that's going to help us at this point. Yeah. Gene, I don't know if you feel like you're back, but are you looking for anything? still trudging up the hill to the manor. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Um, I'm kind of split between, like, I have a kind of like a courtier background, which means I kind of am more interested in, like, noble court and government, but I guess I'm a little bit interested in, like, who would want to trigger something like this, 
But I guess that means like every demonic god in existence, so maybe so you want to um, be looking for like demonic... I'd like to yeah, with maybe uh, with maybe keeping an eye out for someone like Neralis, because I'd like to know if Neralis is one of those like innately evil gods, and the priest is like already, you know, fucked up and over the edge, or is he kind of like a passenger of death? Like, it's it's your time. Let me take you to the end of end of life. Like, or is he like, let's call everybody and like, you know, get rid of them? Like, what kind of god would want to? contaminate and spread and contaminate and spread and like be like a disease I guess so why don't you roll um let's see I was gonna say history but yeah religion history whatever you think since you're doing actual research Um, do I'm gonna have you roll investigation again, actually, because I want you combing through these texts looking for information. Okay. I have an 18. Uh, I can't uh, inspire myself, but Harry does have one for whenever they want to use it. So uh, while looking through your texts, you come across a uh, text of. religious impacts of the uh, province. And you find a mention of Neralis in the index. Neralis serves a Henin Moonbow, an elven goddess of the moon. In the process of elven death, taking newly deceased souls from her care and guiding them to their new existence. Due to their closely related spheres of influence, he often worked with and consulted with Levelus Enereth, the elven god of longevity. Outside of the Seldarine, Neralis was allied with a couple of Ferunian gods, those of perseverance and death. And he was opposed to the Ferunian goddess of pain and draconic death. And a draconic god of death, I'm sorry. Uh, he was very popular where he was worshipped. Um, his faithful servants were non-evil elves. They were concerned with keeping their uh, fellow elves healthy, providing hospice um, for those that were close to death. His clergy was about 60% clerics and 40% specialty priests, known as heralars. The groups worked together in harmony, and they conducted funerary ceremonies intended to the sick and dying. Neralis was worshipped within deep forests, and his holy days were during the new moon, whereupon the clergy would wear white cowls and gray-white robes. This is exactly what the priest is wearing. Mm. By the way. Uh, during their monthly services, prayers were made and crafted items sacrificed to the healer, which were left with the bodies of the deceased in the case of funerals, whether in a vault or grave. Though elves did not exactly fear death, his worshippers were often adventurers who would pray to him and give him their respects in the hopes he would have death pass them by. Friends and relatives of a deceased elf usually prayed for him to speed the soul of the departed to its resting place. So, Neralis was one of the original elven gods, but he was not one of, you know, the highest tier of them. And then generally not evil. He's generally not evil. His followers were good. He was considered a positive aspect of, you know, safe passage to the realms of death and healing. You could pray to him for, you know, favors and uh, he just maintained the order of things. And then you mentioned specifically he was opposed to the god of pain and the draconic god of death? Correct. That would make sense. If he wants you to pass, then he wouldn't want you to suffer. Okay, thank you. And he was allied with gods of perseverance um, and death. Like, 
the ones that maintained order in the process. Thank you. You're welcome. So ultimately, uh, lots of clerics, specialty priests called Haraliars. You may want to write that down and remember that. Yeah, H-A-R-A-L-A-R. H-E-R-A-L-A-R-S. H-E-R-E. Sorry, one more time, sorry. I'll just cut and paste it. Thank you. They were primarily infatuated with healing. End of hospice and a gentle transition into death if healing was not possible. Kind of like palliative care type of thing. Correct. And uh, Neuralis served the elven goddess of the moon. Um, I just remembered something, and I don't know if it's significant or not, so I'm just going to say it to the, the group. Um, the priest was heavily drinking that wine um, beforehand oh. when we got there. And I remember he specifically mentioned, I believe it was Mary's wine, gave him, gave him the wine. Yes, Mary's blackberry wine. Yeah, Mary's blackberry wine. Uh-oh. I don't know if any of you guys think that's strange. We know it can be contagious through, you know, multiple things. One of the things is by drinking something or eating something that was contaminated. Um, I don't know if it was the wine. I, I do remember he offers offered us some of the wine and we turned it down, um, which is probably a good thing. But uh, that might be a potential cause of this. Then you have to ask, did Mary know about it if... She may that or may not it. have, right? Or, or, or we we don't even know if it it, it is, right? But yeah, um, um, I don't know if that's something we could research here, um, but or if we want to talk to Mary or how we want if to handle what it, you, but, if what you could research, uh, how how this is contaminated or sent through, uh, but I guess we already know that. But or if you guys have any ideas of how we could research or find out any more about that, or if it would give us any. Additional clues, I don't know. Someone might so you probably can't Mary. research. Yeah, you probably can't research anything about that. But it sounds more like what you're wanting is to is answers from Mary, not research. Okay. Where does she get her blackberries for the yeah. wine for one thing? Okay. So as far as research goes, everybody is in the library researching. Who else is researching and what? I mean, everybody should be, right? And Harry, what are you Harry was looking for holy sites and stuff like that, I believe. Yeah, hold nearby holy sites, and then just pitching that Mary idea after Gil told him that. All right, and then um, Harry, roll investigation for me as well. Okay. And did you give your bardic inspiration to someone in particular? Uh, I don't to remember. Harry specifically. Oh fuck yeah! Okay. So Harry, with your <laughs> with your traits and your with my insane uh, intellect, attunement, intellect, and focus on history, you are able to narrow down research to the texts that most interest you, which are holy sites of the region, and you find that almost immediately, and you find that the church was a long-standing holy site. The place where the church now stands was originally a gathering of stones that was important to the elven that came there to worship their gods, primarily the goddess of the moon. We might need to make a plea to a certain goddess. So is that there anything is, else? That has been longstanding a holy site. Uh, I will tell you that from your previous studies, you've never heard of this place. You've never heard of uh, the detail in these um, elven gods. As far as you know, even through your studies, Neuralis is is just a story, like a fable. Um, no one in particular believes that heavily in the elven gods any longer. Um, but it seems that this area that you're in is steeped in old tradition. It's steeped in uh, the pagan gods of the elves. 
and that just like the mayor told you, this area is uh, sequestered away in the forests, and many people don't come out there, out that far. We were also told that almost everyone speaks Elvish here as well as common, so. That's correct, yeah. that mm. almost everybody speaks Elvish there. There are a lot of the people that you've run into are elves, and yes, they don't bother hiding their ears. You made a comment about there being prejudice against elves, and it's yeah. very surprising to them because they didn't even notice. Yeah, right. It's as if things have never changed for them here, but many people don't leave. So this is kind of an elven mecca of sorts. You also see in the text that there is another um, cave that is nearby the lake north, well, northwest of here. That was also considered a holy site where the dead and the diseased were taken. That sounds right up what we need. Slipra, oh. let me spell it out for you. What was her name? Slipra is the name of the cave. Name of the it cave. It is also, right. It is a cave that is mentioned in a story in one of the religious, um, the local religious sites. It is, again, not something you have ever heard of. And in fact, you have specialty in fables and narratives, folklore, and have not ever heard of that particular story. Doesn't mean there's not some truth to it, and we are limited on options. Uh, All right, who else is researching, and what are you researching? Am I back? You are. You are back. Yes. Um. Sorry, I'll give Gravy his rapier. And then I'd like to look into um, a connection between Neralis or the elves and the abyss. Specifically. Okay. So you're going to be combing the text for mention of Neralis and any confront excuse me, confrontations with the abyss? Yeah. Yep. I point out to him like, hey, the goddess of death and the draconic god of death like or the god of pain like i don't know maybe they're enemies of neuralis you can look into that gene okay uh are you rather smart gene <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> i see the debate in my head is do you help with a bardic or do you just pray that they roll anyways like a like luck so worst case yeah Roll investigation for what you're... I will use luck and roll again. <laughs> Even worse. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Glad I didn't bardic. Yeah, for sure. A two. You will find nothing in Surprising. regards to... Um, <laughs> any mention of the abyss in the text that you're looking for everything is elven focused any mention of neuralis is small mm -hmm. uh because he was not a major god okay stop doodling in the books gene <laughs> i haven't done any research can i can i see that he's struggling and try to help or do do look myself and then like what hey, are you maybe this is interesting the same thing he was trying to research. the same as him cerebral yeah. investigation and if I find it, I'm just going to be like, look, Gene, is this something? <laughs> Let's see, uh, you said investigation. With the power of teamwork. <laughs> oh, good. I'm not no. that far. Look at this stick, man. <laughs> Gene, I found book. Yell <laughs> uh, holds the book up to Gene and says, is this what you were looking for? And it is, in fact, a coloring book uh, that <laughs> the... Uh, castle children had been coloring in and is a picture of a dragon 
I say it, it was and snatch it away from him. Oh, good. I'm glad I helped. I'm going to color it. Yeah, I take the, like, really old ancient text away from Gene just so he doesn't, like, deface it any. <laughs> Can I relay what I've learned to the group? Yeah, I've relayed some of my stuff, so go ahead here. So the mayor is also investigating, and the oh. mayor says, uh, well, while I haven't found any mention of what to do in the event of this plague, I have been quite enlightened as to how important this area has been. I had always heard from my ancestors that everything here was worth protecting, as you can clearly tell from my covetousness over you trying to take relics that I have been sworn to protect. Uh. I believed it was just my people that I was in charge of protecting, but research and healing and the work here of our priests at our facility, even though the people don't seem much interested in it anymore, it was something that I promised my father and he promised his father that we would continue and not forget. I just, I never realized how prominent and folklore the area is. The good thing that everybody in the outside here hasn't learned about this. Kind of looks well, around at you guys, like staring at him. Could I? Um, I want to insight specifically him saying, like, good thing nobody else knows about this. Like, just to see if he's like the guy who let it slip, or maybe he already knew about this. I go ahead and roll insight then. You know, a thirteen. So. You, uh, you're getting from him that he seems genuinely proud and uh, a little apprehensive with you guys all sitting around, um, immersed in his wealth oh, of knowledge culture. he has here. These relics, the culture, and he genuinely seems concerned if people from the outside discover, you know, everything of value and antiquity that's here, uh, that they'll come to take it. Or think that there's some sort of value and wealth in it. So, uh, just to clarify, so the, the mayor is like the keeper of these relics in this town, right? So he's aware of these relics and, and what their capabilities and things are and what the history about them and things like that? He's not. He's not as aware. Uh, that's why he's researching. He's genuinely surprised okay. by what he's reading because he's never taken the time to specifically look up religious relics or religious sites or all of the things that you guys are searching for. He just knows them as the village he's grown up in, mm -hmm. that he made a promise to protect them and that they are important and he doesn't have a ton of worldly knowledge. Mm. Okay. Um, so, I'm gonna I, I think it's probably time that we uh, we take a break and keep our spirits up, and I have Giancarlo bring us a little something to eat. You guys have been researching there for a good four hours. Yeah. Uh, let's take a break. Um, Jean, you mentioned some of the townsfolk were interested in some information. I'm not sure if you did or not. Uh, yeah, I mentioned in passing that uh, Cherry was asking after the uh, the innkeep. Ah, yeah, I heard from Derek that Mank, or I heard from um, the bartender that uh, Mank is doing a lot better now. Well, that's good. Maybe we should check on him if he's been. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. I think we Sick. should ask Mary as well about her blackberry wine. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, we still don't know the source of all this. We can hopefully cure them now, but... So I just want to... So it's about 11 a.m. So if you're going to hit the market before noon, you should probably book it, the mayor says. Okay. Uh, I had a question. Um, <clears throat> when Harry in the church used the sense disease, um, did he see any on my pack in terms of the abyssal parchment? Oh yeah. You were I would have sensed that. 
because it's anything within well, three feet, so I'm just curious. I don't know where you were standing, or you mean that piece of paper with the yeah with home, with home on it. Okay, here's a good. Now that I've reset, we, we, we did gonna... it in the church as well. You used it when we were in the church, and I don't think anything well, yeah. came off, and we well, were all standing. Now together. that we've come into contact with the mansion and the people in it, and it's morning now, and everyone's gathered in one spot, I'm gonna de use detect why don't disease we, again. Why don't we hold off on that until we get to the source of the blackberry wine? You can look at both at the same time. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. a good. Yeah. Yeah, we'll probably have the mayor do a cave cleanse anyway, just in case. Yeah. Do you guys want to have the market first? Yep. Uh, yes. To. I want to go to the market, and they're going to ask questions, and I wanted to test the wine. Yeah, I want to check on this wine. First. Yeah, let's go to Mary as soon as possible. I'll pass yeah. Harry the abyssal parchment, just in case. I gingerly put it <laughs> in the side pocket of my bag. Nice. So you guys get to the market, and uh, Mary is still there. There's another young woman there selling um, some baked goods from the bakery. Uh, she's about 14. Can, can I just, before we do anything, can I look at Mary and just see if she looks okay? If she looks well and everything like that, just by looking at her, see if she's starting to show any kind of symptoms or anything wrong with her. Roll perception. Perception. Don't perceive. 16. So you eye Mary up from a distance and keep your eyes focused on her as you approach. She is kind of sweating. Mm. Um, she's beaming in the sunlight, though. Um, mm. She's packing up her goods, ready to call it a day. But she looks at you and smiles as soon as you come up, Gal. She's smile. like, oh, I didn't think you'd be back so soon. I heard uh, Manka is awake. I'll let Birdman answer that. Yes, Mary, we had a question. Oh, certainly. Um, hold still really quickly and imagine in your mind's eye a timeshare on the coast. And I'm looking at Harry like... While, they, just, uh... <laughs> while everyone's distracted and standing there in a group, I inch towards everyone in the box of goods and cast Detect Disease. On the blackberry wine? On every, on the just area. the area. Okay. okay. You, uh, can you choose a center point? I will pick, where's the box? Uh, it's on self. Oh, it's on self? Okay. Yeah, but I'm gonna kind of maneuver myself to be in the middle of everything as much as possible. So, you do not get any sense of any kind of uh, disease coming off of anything. Uh, you do, however, see um, a tinge of the same green fog coming off of uh, a small jar on the table uh, behind Mary. Hey, Mary, what's that? Hmm? That she jar. You surprised? She's focused on the timeshare. Oh. Sorry to distract you. I was just curious what was in there. Oh, that is a uh, tincture that I make, special for some of the housewives in the area. Oh, interesting. What's in it, if I may ask? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, it is a... Uh, how would I put it? Expectorant? It oh, causes one to relieve themselves of their consumption of the day. Typically around here for those who drink a little too much in the tavern at night or, you know, get into food that we've told them has gone bad. Uh, many times these men don't listen to us, so, you know, a little expectorant for the women of the area to help I smile. Yes, we can be stubborn sometimes, and that that was the same sort of disease. Is it the same disease fog as the uh, what the poor priest had? 
It is not. The priest had a gray fog. This has uh, a kind of green tinged fog. It's clearly a poison. Is it a strong poison or just one of those mild poisons to make you uh, emit everything? Poison, she says. Well, no, I guess, I know, I'm asking honest. the DM over the table. Oh, okay, okay. So it's it's just a light poison, and she kind of senses your apprehension, and she says, "To be honest with you, it is made of some of the mushrooms here in the area that are not to be consumed. Mm. It's not dangerous by any means, but we do use it for, like I said, some of the more expectorant needs that we may have in households. That's why I only have the one bottle. I imagine that would clear you right up for sure." <laughs> Well, let's hope you're not taking the whole bottle. Typically, I dole it out on a cracker or something for the women that need it. Stay Thanks, Mary. Uh, do you happen to remember who who provide who catered the wedding and uh, post reception thingy? Who brought the food and the 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 drinks? Was it just the bar? Well, the mayor took that all up with uh, with Manka and. Uh, Manka's Kitchens, I believe. I think a couple of the women in the community got together and helped provide some of the labor and the food preparation. Why do you ask? Oh, it was just so good. Um, and uh, I would love to cater my wedding with such stuff. Oh, a happy occasion. Married? She like slaps you on the back. I did not know you were engaged, young man. Oh, no, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself, but uh, I did have a dream about, uh, uh, you know, possible visitor coming into my life. <laughs> you know, Things always the bridesmaid. She says, uh, rubbing your back, like, fondly. She's like, dreams are very important. You must always listen to them. Uh, is there anything I can help you folks with before I finish packing up? I have to get the luncheon ready at home as well. Ah, uh, yes, to Derek, right? Yes, of course. I heard that you folks stopped by his shop. <laughs> yeah, great guy. She, like, pinches your cheek and, like, looks at you and then goes back to, like, packing up her wares here. Harry, uh, did you want any baked goods? I can tell the 14-year-old about a timeshare. Just, like, kind of telling Harry, like, do you see anything well, on the Was the 14-year-old in range? Yes. Oh. No, no. I think I'm quite good. Although, perhaps we should visit uh, Mr. Minka and see how he's doing. Yes, post-haste. Maybe can we I, don't have I much just, time. Can I just clarify something real quick? Um, sure. So, we did the, the de disease spell in this area, and we didn't... Nothing was detected, right? Yeah. But have we confirmed that there's actually blackberry wine in the area? Uh... I he does have some office. of the blackberry wine on the table, like okay. uh, she okay. had before. I just want to make sure it that it was actually physically to... here, and it's not like yeah, her own bat stink. or something in her house or something like that. But okay, okay, I'm I'm good then. We want to move on. Um, that's our time for this week. So, uh, Jean, the uh, scrap of parchment that you had was in the area of the spell earlier and it did not like twinge it didn't give off any kind of notification okay oh thank god oh good <laughs> so when we start next session our goal is to get to make us so that um harry's spell doesn't run out we also need to make sure that i mean i don't know how this stuff is contaminated right but they said like by touch, by blood, by wound. Like, I don't know if those creatures, those manes or whatever, can contract this or give this. So, hopefully. But they said he was doing better, right? So, be okay. hopefully he's fine. I hope yeah. so. No. <laughs> Manka was doing better. Okay. The priest is not. The priest was doing yeah. worse. In fact, he was sprouting sores and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. He has like two um, days. Right. And it's been a full day at this point. Yeah. They might need you to... have about a day. If Minka yeah. doesn't have any answers, we might want to just rush him to the cave or something if we can't yeah, help him. Yeah, I think that's going to have to be a priority. Well, because we just spent 
I mean, how long has it been since the originally it would have happened? Like then like, we spent twelve well, hours yeah. overnight, right? Yeah. You don't know when he. Night. You don't know when he was infected. You yes. do know that the uh, sores are popping up on his wrist. That was the only obvious place, yeah. but nobody inspected him or anything like that. Yeah. So yeah. touching. That was the first, yeah, everybody kind of like backed out of the room at that point. So you don't know when those popped up, but at most it would be two days from when they first appeared. So you have less than a day. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We have less than a day. We can't let this go a whole, a whole another day. Yeah, um, so we'll work fast next time. Yeah. That was fun. That was fun. Yeah. Any Thanks other questions? Good. You're welcome. I'm honestly um, so amped up that I'm not sure I can go to sleep immediately God, now, but... We should have... We, 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 I don't know. Did we research, like, how to deal with this? Like, how to approach it? Like, can you touch it? Can you touch them? Mm. Or is it... I think our approach is, I don't think like anybody researched it. the actual disease, except right. um, you the assume that the mayor spell, did, right. but he didn't say he found anything. Okay. And that you wasted your investigation on looking up the same shit that you did. So. Yeah, but he rolled like a two, so I helped him with my two. You can't <laughs> <always> <laughs> You gave up yeah. your opportunity to investigate. You, I mean, the library's there. You can always go back. Yeah, yeah. we just but don't it'll take time, time right? But time is not on your side. It's just, it's just the same as like if I were a player on this, I would be like, okay, well, there's. Well, didn't I know really from my detect you know. disease that I could cure it with the holy site? Some sort of divine intervention would. Be yeah, the divine only intervention. Out, right? We might yeah. grab some books and read on the way. You knew okay. from your basic um, knowledge of the abyssal plague because it is so dangerous and it leaves such a disgusting, lasting impression when you read it that you specifically remember from your studies that though the information that you know of right now, you have not actually read or received any new information about it. Yeah. So you are relying upon your memory here. We I, might I, need to... Grab some books and read on the way to the cave. I think that's a good good idea when we when we go to the next step. And I think Harry needs to be our reader, which is clearly does better. Well, just as an aside, it is um, to reiterate: you can be infected by the sores. You can be infected by swallowing the void marrow as well. You can be infected by an attack like a claw, a scratch, mm. a scraping, a bite. Any yeah. like is... that, or the disease itself being inside of food or drink because it does survive oxygen, obviously, right? So, yeah. The good news is none of us seem infected right now. So, yeah. Yes. And the better it's news is I... none of us can cure it. Yeah. You do remember to be that careful. It, it's heard that it is incurable and that you you don't. You know, it'd be nice to refresh yourself on as much information as possible about this disease. And that's a, I him. feel like the mayor would be on our case if we didn't try and heal the priest. I'm not sure if he can be healed at this point. Yeah, well, he's the only guy who could heal himself, so we have to find another solution to heal well, him. Well, the mayor's in there researching with you. He very much yeah. cares. I'm thinking we're going to have to, like, bundle him up and, like, poke him with a stick onto like a a, um, a gurney or something and carry him off. I was thinking off. we asked the the mayor to designate some of his guards to help carry transport. Some <laughs> of you may die, but that is a sacrifice I am willing to exactly. make. I mean, they were already in the room. You know, might as well They're have done. the two guys do the carrying. <laughs> we'll be watching out for any bandit attacks along the way. All right. That's our session. I'll see you next Saturday. All right. Thanks, everybody. Regular time. Bye. No changes. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night.